All right, guys. So we're gonna start today with um, yeah, my first raw review for the week. Um, an iffy show. So I'm just gonna quickly go over the matches that happened, and um, you know, then give my thoughts and some of the storylines and everything going on. Um, so we kicked off with the first match, which was Randy Orton and Cesaro versus Kevin Owens and Sheamus. Uh, this wasn't anybody's really best match in this. Uh, I, I think they were definitely saving them up for their own thing at SummerSlam, which uh, seems to be a running, you know trend throughout this show. They didn't want to you know, risk like anybody getting injured. Um, it was by the books, kind of what I expected. Uh, my wife predicted the ending of this one right as they walked out. So, you know, it, it was just by the book. Um, it, it wasn't bad per se. I don't think it was like a terrible match. Um, it just felt very, it, it needed to happen. Like, um, you know, so just moving along with that, nothing big. Um, there wasn't really even build up to the matches at SummerSlam here with this match. So, I don't know what the plan was, but uh, certainly didn't really get me excited for any of these guys at SummerSlam. And next up, since last week, we had the opposite members of these teams face each other. We had Roman Reigns defeat Luke Harper. Uh, it Once again, um, a kind of slow match. Uh, much slower than I'm really used to. Roman Reigns, you know, he's been getting better. He's still not really there, hence why he's not really in the main event, you know, card picture anymore. But um, I definitely think they're trying to, you know, bring him up slowly so the fans can actually get behind him this way. Which, honestly, isn't bad. You know, it's not really bad, honestly. Um, But, you know, the match ended um, uh, with, like, you know, everybody kind of fighting each other. It was mayhem everywhere. Kind of expected, since obviously these two um, teams are going to be facing each other, family versus family. Uh, so that's really not bad. Um, I, I'm really excited to this match. I think um, everybody in it can do good if given the right amount of time, which um, hopefully they get a good you know 15 minute chunk. So this match not bad. And next up we had a women's match, which was Becky Lynch defeating Tamina. Uh, this match I, um, I, I know Becky Lynch like watching NXT and everything, she can do a lot better. Tamina can do a lot better. Uh, this match felt like once again they just told him go out there do something um there was a just it, it felt a little bit lazier than what i'm used to seeing from um the divas division especially in the last like month and a half where they really made a push to you know get them into matches which obviously at this show they had a main event women's match so that was pretty awesome which was uh, honestly a lot better than this one um this match I wasn't too excited for. I know my wife watching it, she was like, ah, they're kind of being a little sluggish. So maybe there was something wrong with one of them. Maybe they had to take slower pace. Um, who knows? Just um, I really wasn't feeling this one. And then we come to my man Rusev defeating Mark Henry. Uh, this match, not the best, obviously. Um, you know, Rusev, I think, can do good once given the uh, appropriate opponent and time to develop, uh, you know, a rhythm with that superstar. Mark Henry, I haven't been the biggest fan of since uh, early sexual chocolate days, so that should give you enough. Um, this match was out there just so they could get Mark Henry out there, really. That's what it felt like. Um, obviously, it ended up with, we finally finally get the return of Ziggler he was over shooting a movie so he was having this you know injury to happen um so we're gonna get that finally uh this felt very underwhelming um you know going into a pay-per-view with literally a week of build-up between these two not even a full week you know six days uh you're going into it it just kind of felt like nothing it felt like Rusev was doing the motions waiting for this to happen finally this is happening justifying the match and it just kind of felt like lazy writing. Like, I don't understand. Maybe they should have worked in someone else having this type of problem. You know, Rusev going on some sort of, I don't know, I'm going to destroy you spree, right? And he gets another target. And then he really wants to go after him. You know, and this guy's fighting back. And then they're like, well, we have something else for you. Here's, you know, here's now Ziggler. Well, you know, you took Ziggler out. You almost took me out. Now we're going to make it a two-on-one handicap. So, you know, you got to show off what you got, and we're going to pretty much beat the hell out of you. Thus, if Rusev wins that one, it puts him over even more, and it kind of gets these two guys who maybe aren't as big, you know, singles, because Rusev's been destroying everybody, maybe makes them look a little bit, um, you know, uh, weaker in comparison, but if they win, then we can get another rematch or singles. I just think uh, the booking in this match felt a whole lot wrong. Oh yeah, um, no build up to SummerSlam with Adrian Neville teaming up with, uh, you know, Stefan Amell, who's of course the Green Arrow over on CW. Um, 
yeah, that's kind of just a throwaway. They couldn't even really manage to fit any of these guys into a match. Um, disappointing as hell. And I think what the worst part was is like it was like a two minute takeaway, and they had Cody Rhodes out there, you know, with his whole Stardust thing, cutting a promo. Just didn't really do it. That was really underwhelming. Next up, we had Ryback, who defeated The Miz. Uh, if you guys stick around on this channel, you're going to learn I am not a fan of Ryback at all. I, I do not like this guy. I don't like you know his style, which you know just tends to be injure people or botch moves. I, did, I really can't stand when he's wrestling. Um, and, you know, he, of course, pretty much pulled a squash match on Miz. Go figure. Um, it, it just... Uh, it was a typical Ryback match. I, I don't know what to say, really. Obviously, setting up a thing when you know Big Show, Big Show walking away. Um, the three are going to have a match at SummerSlam. And I'm pretty sure that match is going to be the piss break now. So so then we come to the contract signing. Uh, this was, of course, John Cena and Seth Rollins. Two men really good on mic this time. Um, John Cena, that's no surprise. Seth Rollins, I'm glad they're giving him more time to work on the mic. Uh you know, definitely the uh, standout from Shield. Uh, so they, of course, did the contract signing. This was, of course, another way to prevent both of them from wrestling. Uh, you know, just don't risk injuries. They're you know second biggest pay per view of the year. You know, get them out there, get them trash talking. But um, you know, and here lies the problem. We're going into this, and there was not a whole lot of build up besides words. Uh, you know, the two obviously John Cena's coming off. Um, you know, having his nose surgically repaired, so that he's got to take it easy. But, you know, him not even doing anything or, like, attacking Seth Rollins or anything like that felt really, really weird. Uh, it, it was just them two, you know, talking, and it's supposed to be this heated conversation and both men wants to get up in the other dude's face, or so we're supposed to believe, but no one is really doing that. So if no one is doing that, and they're both just kind of standing there, then one walks away and the other one tosses the mic... Not really much being built up here, you know? And if you blinked, you might have missed this match. Um, yeah, uh, Primetime's players in the Lucha Dragons defeated the New Day and Los Matadores. Um, this was a waste. I think they only got them in here so they could tell you that there's a match coming up with all three, you know, or all four of these teams facing each other at the pay-per-view for the titles. And that was about it. Um, no one got those nice spots they've been doing. Uh, no one really got even a minute to shine. And it was over literally before you knew it. Um, really a throwaway match and a waste of everybody's talent in this. And your main event, the NXT Women's Champion, Sasha Banks, defeated uh, the Divas Champion, Nikki Bella. So obviously this wasn't a title match, but they want to put that seed of doubt into your head, you know. Being like, oh, she could lose, she could lose, we never know what's going to happen. Um, Obviously she's going to break AJ's record, you know, that's kind of like, oh, we've got to punish AJ and CM Punk, so whatever. Um, Honestly, not a bad match, uh... Definitely better than the women's match earlier in the night. You know, they've been keeping momentum. I think, honestly, Nikki Bell has gotten a whole lot better, um, especially in the last six months. You go compare matches, it feels like she's actually been um, putting a lot of effort, been listening to what some people have been telling her, you know, backstage, um, been selling a lot better. So, th this wasn't the best women's match we could get, but it was a good enough women's match that, you know, when they get to the pay-per-view when they have the women's match hopefully everybody can deliver on there you know everybody's been having these great singles or tag team matches so hopefully this can um you know keep up uh the good uh, stream of um women's matches so I, I did enjoy this one and then finally we get to the end of the show the last 10 minutes um paul Heyman coming out doing the best promo cuts in the last 10 years of wwe hyping up brock lesnar where brock doesn't even need to talk he just stands around hometown guy here and um I'm really struggling hard, and I, I can't stress enough how hard I'm struggling to uh, understand the booking for this match. So, we go into WrestleMania. Brock Lesnar is the bad guy taking on Undertaker with his streak, and Undertaker loses. So, everybody loves Undertaker more because we want to see him come back, and hates Brock Lesnar. Okay, that's, that's the way we're supposed to be going, because he defeated the streak, and Paul Heyman's the bad guy. So, now we're going to get this rematch... And they've been booking Brock as the face. And Undertaker hasn't been around. So Brock is face as the face is facing Seth Rollins as the heel. 
And then Undertaker, they, you know, comes back and obviously interferes in their match at the last pay-per-view, which is supposed to set up the face versus heel. Except here's the problem. People are were behind Brock as the face, and now Undertaker's coming back as the face. So now we have a face versus face, and we're struggling. You're going into the pay-per-view where one has to be the clear-cut heel for us to, you know, want to cheer for someone. Except here's the problem. You're in Brock's hometown where he's the face. And you're doing, like, all these, like, pyros and you're dropping streamers and confetti. Which is obviously making Undertaker the heel now. It, but they're trying to sell Undertaker on the commentary as the face and Brock as the heel. Uh, I was really lost in this. Um, I don't even know who I'm cheering for, honestly. And the way they built up this match, the two have had two appearances with each other in like five weeks. It's feeling really cheap. I, this match can't possibly live up to the hype that they're hyping it up as. I just don't get it. Um, and overall, that continues with um, this trend of Monday Night Raw before SummerSlam. I don't get it. It just feels lazy. And... Honestly, laziness is not really what you want, guys. Um, You're going into a pay-per-view, a pretty big pay-per-view. So maybe that's why they're doing it. Maybe they're just um getting by by their, you know, um fact that they know it's a big pay-per-view and people buy it. But it felt cheap. This Monday Night Raw was probably one of the worst in the last three months. Um, and that's disappointing. Uh, I don't even know what to score this. Maybe a 5.56 on its best day would be it.